Hello, I'm Mark, and this is the Fast Track Impact podcast, where we look at how researchers can become more productive and use their work to achieve real world impact. In today's podcast, I'm going to talk about the power of planning for impact. But before we get into that, I'd like to give you my research impact tip of the week. Today's tip is to turn your literature review into a briefing note. Now, a lot of us will start a research project, whether it's a PhD uh, or a funded research project, with a literature review. Now, that literature review rarely sees the light of day until you have completed your project and it appears in your thesis. It's one of the chapters that very often will not actually get formally published, so that's instantly not that accessible. Uh, or it may end up in a condensed version in a peer-reviewed paper uh, that perhaps sees the light of day five years after you actually started that research. Uh, moreover, many of us conduct literature reviews for the kind of the state of the art or background section of our uh, research proposals, and whether or not they actually end up getting funded. Uh, again, these are things which sit there on our hard drives, uh, not actually being used by anyone. And what I'm going to suggest is that a really great way that you can add value to the people who are interested in your research right now, today, this week, is to go back to one of those literature reviews that you haven't managed to publish yet and turn it into a briefing note. Now, as a briefing note that um, is going to be much more condensed and, and simplified, you're not going to get into problems of having already published this so that you know, this is now no longer publishable as a paper in future. You need to watch out for that. Uh, but if you want to take that risk, then you can actually put it out there um, uh, in its raw format. Now, uh, you may think, well, what's the point of doing that, Mark? But actually, we forget very often that many of the people that we are working with in policy, in the NGO world, for example, in business, uh, have a key interest in our research, but they don't have access to the literature. Uh, partly because it's behind a paywall often, uh, and we as researchers are usually uh, actually behind that paywall so we can access the material. But even if they could access that material, very often it's written in jargon that is fairly impenetrable. And of course, what we also forget is that as researchers, we have uh, a prior knowledge that can enable us to quite easily access and digest the meaning of the latest research as it is published. So just making your literature review available to these people can actually be incredibly valuable and bring them onto the cutting edge with you. Now, of course, your focus is on that new research that you are looking to do, that new knowledge you want to generate. But very often, actually, the existing knowledge is still of massive value to people who are interested in your research. And by making that accessible, they can extract that value. Now, if you want to avoid problems of uh, publication later on, just email them. You don't have to publish this and put it online anywhere that might stymie future attempts to publish this work. But of course, the greatest value is actually turning this into a briefing note. Now, an example of this was a uh, Scottish government funded project that uh, I was doing and we were working hard. I was the academic doing the literature review, you know, doing the, the thinking, and I'd done a lot of that work and I'd produced a very technical uh, literature review. We as a team thought we were doing really well. Of course, what we'd forgotten to do was to communicate back with our funder who contacted us a few weeks down the line saying, you know, what's going on? I'm worried that the project's uh, slipping. You know, they, they really felt quite nervous uh, that we weren't actually doing any work. Now, we didn't actually have anything to show them in terms of our milestones. Our milestone was coming up. We hadn't reached it. Uh, there wasn't anything that we could send them. However, I... Uh, quite quickly that evening as I was travelling somewhere, uh, turned that literature review into a briefing note on two sides of A4 
and we sent that to the people from the Scottish Government, which synthesised the state of the art of our knowledge of that area as it currently stood. And instantly they got enormous value for it from it. Now, we showed them the original review as well, just to say, look, we have been doing work, honestly. Uh, but it was that uh, briefing though, that enabled them to then send that around their colleagues and discuss our work uh, and help them feel like they were moving with us uh, in that project. It's a fairly easy thing to do. Uh, potentially, this is a job that you could give to someone else on your team, uh, or if you're lucky enough to have a science writer uh, or some other kind of communications specialist as part of your broader group, then even better if they can digest and uh, translate your literature review for you. Uh, the point is, this is a fairly simple thing that you can do fairly quickly to add value upfront right now in your project uh, rather than having to make people wait for a long time for something that they may never be able to get access to, and even if they did, that they may never be able to understand. So, turn your literature review into a briefing note. So, the main point of today's podcast is to think about the power of planning for impact. I believe that the research projects that have the most impacts very often, not always, but very often are the ones that plan most effectively for impact. If you have a clear idea of exactly what it is that you want to achieve, with whom, for whom, and how you're going to go about achieving that impact alongside your research, then the chances of you actually achieving those impacts are way, way higher than if you kind of just go with the flow and hope that something will just come up that will deliver some impact at some point. Now, we are very often uh, used to doing this as part of the funding process now. So if you have applied for funding recently in the UK, certainly, but uh, many other international funders now, uh, you are expected to think uh, about the kind of impacts that your research might potentially have uh, as a result of achieving your research goals. Uh, now, these are usually fairly putative, fairly vague documents, although uh, admittedly the most effective ones are as specific as they can be. But in a couple of sides of A4, there's a limit to how much detail you can put in. So in all of the uh, impact plans that I'm putting to, to funders, uh, I will always say that uh, if funded, the first step will be to turn this into a fully fledged impact strategy that really can tangibly deliver the benefits to the times and specifications that I'm suggesting might be possible in the funding application. Now, I'm going to suggest that this is something that is worth doing whether you're a PhD student or whether you've got a multi-million pound project. But once you get that project and you start it, the first thing you need to do is to revisit those initial thoughts and start to flesh them out to make concrete plans. So at the same time as you're putting postdocs into place, thinking about when your field season will be, uh, how you'll collect your data, how you'll analyse it, think about how you're going to achieve your impacts, what work needs to be done to achieve those impacts, and plan that alongside your research planning. Now, having a plan doesn't mean that you need to be inflexible. Quite the contrary, it's important to have a plan that is adaptive, that can be flexible, uh, so that when new opportunities arise, you can exploit those opportunities. So uh, a new issue has arisen that is very newsworthy, everyone's talking about it, and in some shape or form, it links to your research. Great, let's do a whole load of new activities uh, uh, with the media, with the public now, around this new issue which is highly topical, linking our research to that. We couldn't have foreseen this, uh, but we're now going to adapt and use the resources that we've planned for in a creative way so that we can still uh, use that uh, opportunity. You have to also bear in mind that the people that you're working with and for will change over time and their priorities may well change over time. So uh, you need to be flexible in that sense uh, as well. Uh, and I think uh, very often we think that yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a fairly technical job and 
It's not something that I've been trained to do and I don't feel that comfortable doing this. But the great thing is that if you plan for impact, then you can resource for impact. Uh, now, uh, most research funders nowadays expect you to take impact seriously and to demonstrate that you're taking impact seriously, you are expected to put some resources to it, you know, financial resources as part of your project. Uh, some funders actually stipulate a particular amount. Uh, I was speaking to a research funder who was telling me uh, that they were really frustrated that they couldn't persuade academics to put more resource to uh, their impact. And that even when they put out a directed call where they stipulated that they wanted a minimum of 10% of the total budget put towards impact, the average that they got was between 3 and 4%. Now, the great thing about taking this seriously and putting budget to it means that it is, is that you don't have to do it all yourself. That's fine. You can feel out of your comfort zone and, hey, give it to someone else. And the great thing is that when you give some of these jobs to uh, communications professionals, you get a fantastic quality of product that is way better than you could have done yourself. And, of course, without the stress of trying to do all that stuff uh, yourself as well. Now, there are pros and cons to this. Uh, the more that you outsource to specialists and the less that you do yourself, the more scary it can be when uh, ultimately, uh, as the leader of the project, the media want to talk to you and you don't have that experience and you're not sure what terms to use and how to make it uh, tangible and, uh, and, and concrete in, in ways that people can understand. Uh, but the point is that we typically work in teams and whether you can afford the resource of uh, paid staff or this is uh, a group of PhD students who are pooling their expertise, uh, you will inevitably have other people you can draw on, other resources you can draw on that can help you to achieve impacts in ways that you couldn't have done yourself. So finally, I want to... Um, uh, talk you through a, a very structured process that I believe can, in the matter of a couple of hours or uh, maybe an afternoon's work, really transform your ability to actually deliver real impact uh, at the end of a project and, and through a project as well. Uh, now, uh, uh, what you need to do is to go to the Fast Track Impact uh, website. So it's www.fasttrackimpactoneword.com uh, and click on resources. And uh, there are a number of templates there and you're looking for the impact planning template. And you can download this as a, a Word document so that it's editable and you can fill this out yourself. And I'm going to suggest that uh, in an ideal world, you do this with your research team. If you're a PhD student, you do this with your, your supervisors. But do it yourself if, uh, if no one else is motivated to do it with you. And um, uh, usually I will start by doing a stakeholder analysis. Now, we'll cover this in more detail in a future podcast. Um, but if you have an idea of who it is that has a stake or an interest uh, in your research... Uh, and when it comes to interest, we're talking about specific uh, segments of the public rather than just the general public. Uh, we're talking about uh, specific organisations and perhaps um, individuals or uh, teams within that, uh, that organisation. If you have a sense of who some of these people might be, then you can uh, ideally then uh, come up with some key messages from your research that will resonate with their interests. If you have that, then it's fairly straightforward to work back to uh, an impact outcome, an impact objective, an impact goal. Now, in an ideal world, you'll have that impact goal uh, in your mind already. You'll have set that uh, in your funding proposal. Uh, you'll have some clear goals that you know you have to achieve. Great. Start with that if you've got it. But uh, what I find is that very often people find that, that point of setting a goal quite challenging. So if necessary, work back to it from the kind of things that you feel uh, people are interested in or might be able to use or benefit from uh, your research. Now, of course, a good objective uh, is a smart objective. It needs to be something quite specific. Uh, ideally, it's, it's measurable. It's uh, achievable. Uh, it's realistic. And it is timely. So uh, if you've got an, an objective which 
you really can't measure, that is really unspecific, that, uh, yeah, you might be able to achieve in 10, 20, 50 years, then yeah, it's worth having a bit more of a thought about this. Uh, and now the next step is to say, right, uh, if this is what I want to achieve, and this is who I want to achieve it with, then what kind of delivery mechanisms or knowledge exchange activities might I design uh, around these key messages from my research that could enable me to achieve that outcome? Now, typically, there will be a number of different activities that you might want to do. Uh, and then, crucially, how are you going to know that that activity that you've just done actually worked, that it actually brought you closer to your impact rather than further away from your impact. Now, in the template I've uh, put in brackets here, impact indicators, and then and means of measurement. Uh, and the reason that I've added this is that I think very often when we think of an indicator, we come up with things which yeah, actually aren't that realistic. So yeah, in an ideal world, I'd have that data. I could access that data, but actually it's far too expensive. It would take far too long and I actually have no idea where I would find it. So make sure that it is realistic. And uh, then I like to move on to uh, the kind of risks that you might uh, uh, be exposed to when you're trying to achieve this impact. So there are two types of risks you need to think about here. The first is a risk that the activity that you've designed doesn't work. You know, no one turns up to the event, for example, uh, or it has some kind of unintended consequence, so, say, inflaming conflict. Uh, but the other type of risk is, is, of course, the risk that you don't achieve your impact uh, or that your impact has some form of unintended consequence or, or negative uh, effect for a certain group. So then once you've identified those risks, you can think about how you might mitigate them, both for, the, for your impact uh, and for the activities that you're designing to achieve your impact. Finally, then, you need to then uh, think about who is going to take responsibility for each of these activities and uh, potentially for each objective. Uh, and what are the resources that you will need to make that happen? And uh, what is the time? What are the deadlines? Uh, when do you expect these things to be done? When will you check back on them to see if it worked uh, or not? And this is, for me, really crucial to turn this from an aspiration into a reality. You can stick little reminders into an electronic diary, into, into your paper diary to say, uh, check with so-and-so uh, whether this activity has been completed and how it went. Uh, and you can keep a track on things to see whether things are working. And if they're not working, to think with your team about how you might get things back on track so that you can actually achieve your impact. If you download this template, if you fill this out, have a think about it with your team, I guarantee you this will significantly increase the probability that you achieve impact. It's a couple of hours of your time, maybe an afternoon, but that time that you spend planning for impact is the power that will actually make it credible that you achieve impact. Every week I like to try and turn what we've talked about into an action point that you can follow up in the coming days. And what I'm going to suggest that you all do now is to actually go to the website and download this template and fill it out for yourself. Now, to make this easier, I've also provided with you, uh, as part of this template, a worked example from my own research. Um, this is a real uh, project, which is an ongoing project, and these are real milestones, real deadlines, real responsibilities uh, that I've set uh, in this example. Uh, as you'll see from the example, unfortunately, my name appears far too much in that list. Um, and what was great about this as an example was that uh, we saw that one of our key stakeholders was the business community and one of our key indicators of success was that we were actually seeing money from businesses invested in peatland restoration. And this is something that we monitored on a regular basis whenever we had uh, project meetings and it was always coloured red, it was never making any progress. And literally for two years this indicator sat 
at uh, a static point. Uh, and this enabled us to realize, you know what, actually everything we're trying is not achieving this goal. So we need help. We can't do this alone. We don't really understand how the business world works. We don't know what makes people tick. We don't have the right social networks. And we went out there and employed a fixer, for want of a better word, who basically sells his social networks, knows all the rich and the powerful and the famous people in the world, uh, or so he claims. And he started going out there using his social networks and setting us up with people from the boards of big companies so that we could then start to pitch our ideas to them and start to make progress towards this goal for the first time. If we hadn't been measuring that, if we hadn't been monitoring that to see if it was working or not, there's no way that we'd have been able to pick this up in time to actually make a difference and achieve our impact goal. As a result, now we are on track to actually achieve an impact which will have a measurable impact on UK peoples. So download the template, fill it out, do it yourself if need be. Ideally do it with your research team and watch as the results begin to happen.